morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told out of Voice of Radio, so today, we need to take a little bit of a look at which of the Year 1 Sword and Shield TCG sets you should be thinking about investing in, collecting, use whichever phrase you feel is more appropriate. Basically, we are running to the end of Year 2 of the Pokemon TCG, and the other day, we were having a, a lovely old chat, and one of the things we were chatting about was the price of booster boxes. And one of the things we noticed was that the year one sets are starting to creep up in price just a little bit. And that means that we need to start looking at which of these we want to be picking up before it's a little bit too late. Plus, we've done a whole bunch of videos comparing more recent sets that have gone very well so i thought this might be a fun little exercise so let's go through the four year one sets and see what we can come up with because you know what some of these sets are better than others now in terms of booster box prices i showed you this the other day but if we go by us ebay to get a booster box of sword and shield you're generally looking at somewhere in the region of about 200 dollars ish maybe just a tiny bit more with the rrp being 143 dollars and 64 cents that means that sword and shield is becoming much harder to find at that price Rebel Clash is also popping above RRP now. You'll generally be paying somewhere in the region of about $175. So that one is getting harder to find at RRP. Darkness of Blaze can still be found a little bit under. $120, $130 is what you should be expecting. So it's not that much under, but it is at least under for now. And Vivid Voltage is, again, in a pretty similar position. You're paying around about $120-ish for a box. So the latter two can still be found under RRP, but if Sword and Shield and Rebel Clash are now starting to become harder to find for retail, you can expect that Darnas of Blaze and Vivid Voltage will follow suit sooner rather than later. And if you want to be grabbing these, again... Sooner rather than later really is a phrase we're going to um, keep coming back to, I think is fair to say. So starting off with Sword and Shield then. Sword and Shield's kind of a weird set because there are a bunch of decent cards in there. You've got Full Art Marnie, which is about a $35 card. Gold Zashin, which is about a $30 card. Gold Zamazenta, which is about a $20 card. And Full Art Zashin, which is about a $10 card. And that's about it. If you're looking at kind of your money cards from Sword and Shield, the ones that you really want to be opening up, that's what you've got. That's basically all that you've got here. And I understand that's not that many. Now, the good news is in terms of secret rares, you know, in Sword and Shield, it's year one. There aren't that many of them. If you're looking at full arts and above in Sword and Shield, there's only 30 of them. 30 might sound like a lot. But it really isn't. Actually, I should mention we've also got Gold Quick Ball. Don't know how I forgot Gold Quick Ball. But that is about a $35 card. It's up there with Full Art Marnie. So that's another one that people are going to be pretty excited to pull. So we've got a few cards there. It's not a huge amount of cards, let's be clear. But there are a few cards in there which are very much worth picking up. Cards that are okay. And I suppose Rainbow Rare Marnie is about a $25 card as well. It's not as sought after as the full art, unfortunately, but it is still a decent card. Plus, it's a Sword and Shield base set, and people like base sets. I mean, in terms of playability, if you're looking at this, you know, for playability down the line, it's full of staples like Quick Ball and Professor's Research and Marnie and all of those good things. It's a very good set in that regard. In terms of popular Pokemon, you do have Snorlax, who does have a full art version, which is quite nice, and a Rainbow Rare of the VMAX, which is quite nice. And to be fair, the Rainbow Rare VMAX is about another $25 card, so I did not give you the full list of the Sword and Shield ones in the beginning, and I'm sorry about that. So, Sword and Shield's a good set, is what I'm going for here. Between your Zashian cards, your Marnie cards, your Snorlax cards, there are some good cards in here, and it's a base set that people tend to like. It is a pretty good set. Now, Rebel Clash is often looked down on as the worst of the Sword and Shield sets, or at least the worst in year one. But there were some decent cards coming around here. I mean, Boss's Orders, 
comes in quite nicely. It's about a $30 card. And look, we're not talking about the best, most sought-after cards ever here. $30 in the grand scheme of things, it's not a huge card in that regard. But you're still talking about a decent card. You're talking about a full art version of a very sought after card. This is a pretty cool thing. People like this. Not to mention we've also got the Rainbow Rare Bosses Orders. Which comes in at around about a $20 card as well. Which is fine. It's not amazing. But it's fine. You've also got your Sonya cards there. Now Sonya is not a hugely playable card let's be honest with you. But the full art comes in about a $25 card. The rainbow comes in about a $15 card. So these are decent cards, sought after cards, ones that people are going to like. And it is a set that is built around the first partner Pokemon. And people like the first partner Pokemon. So, you know, Cinderace VMAX. The rainbow rare comes in at around about $15. We've got Inteleon VMAX. Which admittedly only comes in about $10. But Inteleon's a pretty playable card and people like it. And then we've got your Rillaboom VMAX. Which again is about a $15 card. In terms of the Rainbow Rare. So you've got those coming around which is actually honestly kind of nice. And weirdly Ninetales. I never really understand this. But Ninetales V is a sneaky sought after card. You know talking about $15 for the full art despite the fact the regular one's like a $2 card. People just like Ninetales. And I'm not going to sit here and argue that this is the best set ever. But you've got things like Scoop Up Net, the gold version, which is about a $15 card. Which is not too bad. And bearing in mind we're talking about now Gold Frostmoth is about a $15 card. So there are some cards in here. Galarian Berserker, the gold version, is, is about a $15 card. This is not the trash set that a lot of people make it out to be. And one thing which is always worth pointing out, the sets that nobody likes at the time tend to be not kept, tend to be not collected, which makes them rarer in the future. I'm not saying that Rebel Clash is going to be some amazing set in the future, but I am saying if everyone else is saying, don't bother collecting Rebel Clash, it's garbage, well, maybe in 15, 20 years' time, if no one's collected Rebel Clash, it's going to be good for the people that have. Just putting that one out there. It's not a stunning set, don't get me wrong. Rebel Clash is not up there with Sword and Shield. But between the bosses, orders cards, the Sonya cards, the first part of the Pokemon and things of that nature, there are a bunch of cards in there that are all worth $15 or more now when the set is still not that difficult to get hold of. In the future, these could be ballooning. Now, Darkness Ablaze is a weird one because everybody thinks of Darkness Ablaze as a Charizard set. And if you think about Darkness Ablaze as a Charizard set, sounds pretty good. But actually, you've only got the VMAX, and the VMAX is only like a $30 card. So, yeah. That's a little bit of a problem. There were Rainbow Rare and Shiny versions of that card, but they weren't in Darkness Ablaze. And once you get past the Charizard, which again is only about a $30 card, it's pretty slim pickings. Uh, the V Max of the Salamence, the Rainbow Rare, that'll set you back. Oh, that, you know, $10. Yeah. Same with the Butterfree Rainbow Rare. Uh, the Gold Colossal comes in just a little bit less, about a $9 card. It's not a set which is really looking great in that regard. There's a Gold Rillaboom in the set. And Gold Rillaboom is probably about a $12 card. Which is really not that impressive when you consider the rest of the set. And we really want some in a whole, you know, hang our hat on here. And there really isn't a huge amount. And part of the problem is that we don't have really popular Pokemon. You know, Rainbow Rare Return of SV Max is like a $12 card. And sure, it's playable and maybe Eternatus becomes really popular in the future. But generally speaking, this is not a set which is overflowing with popular Pokemon. I mean, Crobat V, the full art of Crobat V, is one of the best cards in the game right now. It's like a $5 card. There really isn't very much in Darkness Ablaze. And when I'm looking at this side by side, right now, Rebel Clash booster box is more expensive than Darkness Ablaze, though they are three months older. And when I'm looking at the good cards, sure, they're both kind of tied at the top, but Rebel Clash has a lot more cards that are $15 or more 
than Dark Zone Blaze does that only really has Charizard. And maybe that's going to be enough. Maybe in the future, the fact that it's a set with Charizard in does set it apart from the rest. But as I'm looking right now, if you're looking at a set which is likely to hold value, go up in value, be worth more in the future, I'm sorry, but Rebel Clash is trending better than Darkness Ablaze. Looking at the price of booster boxes right now, although again, the fact that this older does matter, and looking at the facts of the prices of the main cards in the set, the most sought after, the most expensive cards in the set, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, but it really is starting to look an awful lot like Darkness Ablaze, just a better option than Rebel Clash. Now, as we move into Vivid Voltage, Vivid Voltage has one huge, gigantic, enormous advantage over the other sets here. It's Pikachu. Pikachu VMAX Rainbow Rare. We're looking at the first year of the Pokemon TCG here, Sword and Shield. And in the first year of the Sword and Shield Pokemon TCG, the number one card that you can pull from packs at least is Pikachu V Max, and it's not the Rainbow Rare, and it's not even close. There is nothing. There is nothing in any of the, you know, Marnie takes second place at $35. Pikachu is a $160 card, maybe more. It is that gosh darn big. It is huge. And honestly here, when we're looking at Vivid Voltage, we are looking at, I want to pull a Pikachu. But when you look at a sealed product in the future, hey, this booster box might have a Pikachu in. That'll do it. Because if you go far enough in the future, people aren't opening booster boxes. So the fact that it might have a Pikachu in is going to be enough for a lot of people. This is a big deal. And this is a thing that really sets Vivid Voltage apart from the other sets is the fact that there might be a Pikachu V Max Rainbow Rare in there. Now, there might also be a full art Pikachu V, although honestly, that is coming in at more of a $20 ish card. It's not a huge card in that regard. And there isn't a huge amount after that. You've got your Rainbow Rare B, which is about a $15 card. A uh, Rainbow Rare Nessa, somewhere in that region as well. A uh, Gold Galarian Obstagoon comes in at about a $10 card. Uh, full Art Leon is about a $10 card. Full Art Pokemon Center Lady, weirdly, is coming in at a more respectable, you know, $13-ish. There's a bunch hovering around the $10 mark, but Vivid Voltage is pretty clear, honestly. Vivid Voltage is there for the Pikachu. And I'm sorry, I'd like to give you a more in-depth explanation. I'd like to give you a, a fancier talk through the set, but really it's Pikachu V Max. That's kind of where we are, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen. Um sorry. Now in terms of elite trainer boxes, I think it's worth having a quick look at those as well. That is the other sealed product people are generally keeping and sealing and all of that. In terms of sword and shield, remember there are two there's a Ashen and a Zamazenta. It's a bit weird because well yeah, one of these on there for $43, which is retail, and one of them's on there for $80, which is a little bit strange. If we do look at more recent sold listings, we generally find that they are about $60. That is roughly what they're going for at the moment, but I think they've been reprinted a bit more recently. In terms of Rebel Clash, this one, again... It's proving a bit more difficult to get hold of. You're talking $80, $90, and these are only going to rise in the future. You will notice already a little bit more than Sword and Shield, but again, I do think Sword and Shield did have a more recent, even though it's an older set, it had a more recent kind of release of Elite Trainer Boxes. Now, Darnus of Blaze is setting itself aside a little bit here. Trying to get ones from the US, you're looking at $120, $130 already, even though it's a more recent set. And again, with everything I've looked at here, I don't really understand. I know the community want Dancer Blaze ETBs more than they want Rebel Clash. So it's one of these ones that is getting harder and harder to get hold of. It's already about three times retail and is probably only going to go up in the future. And we can say a similar thing about Vivid Voltage hovering somewhere around the $90 mark. Again, it's got Pikachu and all of that. I remain a little bit confused why the Darkness of Blaze Elite Trainer Boxes are 
more expensive than the others because I've already shown you the booster boxes and Darkness of Blaze isn't the most expensive. And I've shown you the top cards in the set and Darkness of Blaze is not winning that round either. So it's a little bit weird to see them coming in here as the most expensive elite trainer box. And I know it's got Charizard in, but Charizard's not that expensive as a card. that We don't have the chase versions. They're in other sets. So I'll be honest with you, this is, as I've shown, it's a little bit out of whack with the rest of it. But for now, you know. So what's our conclusion? I mean, Sword and Shield base set seems like a very strong option overall. Lots of good cards. It's a base set. Vivid Voltage is probably your number one, but only really for the chance of pulling a Rainbow Rare Pikachu. That is about it. And of the others, right now, Rebel Clash is trending higher than Darkness of Blaze. And I know I'm not probably supposed to say that. I know that's not supposed to be the thing. I know I'm supposed to be saying that Rebel Clash is a trash set that nobody's going to want. But I've shown you, ladies and gentlemen, although the Elite Trainer Boxes don't follow the pattern, I'm sorry that's not up to me. Generally speaking, this is a set which, right now, it's outpacing Darkness of Blaze. Just putting that out there. For now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to know what you think about this. I want to know which one's your favourite, which ones you're going to be investing in, keeping sealed, buying, opening, whatever you do with them. So go nuts in the comment section, would you? But be nice! And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all kinds of fun stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.